Father, Son, Holy Spirit. This is from Luke uh, chapter 11. While still more people gathered in the crowd, Jesus said to them, This generation is an evil generation. It seeks a sign, but no sign will be given it, except the sign of Jonah. Just as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, so will the Son of Man be to this generation. At the judgment, the Queen of the South will rise with the men of this generation, and she will condemn them because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And there is something greater than Solomon here. At the judgment, the men of Nineveh will arise with this generation and condemn it, because at the preaching of Jonah they repented, and there is something greater than Jonah here. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We should accept trouble and annoyance as gifts from heaven, receive them in real thankfulness, and humble ourselves silently and meekly beneath the blows that are dealt us, imitating the wise and prudent and constant patriarch Job. Another sentiment that should inspire us is that of penance. We should gladly suffer all inflictions as a chastisement well merited by our sins. No matter how ill-treated we may be, we should feel that the pain falls far short of what we have deserved. This brings us into a state of true peace. This fits us to exhort and lead our neighbor to the practice of virtue. And in this way, it's far more profitable to us, far more conducive to God's honor, than all manner of self-chosen devotional or penitential exercises. Surely, if all teachers were dead and buried, and if all books were burnt, we should have learning enough and wisdom enough in the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever virtue we may lack, let us but fix our eyes on him and study him earnestly, and we shall abound with grace. How he has gone before us in all patience and mildness, enduring every conceivable opposition from men and devils, in abandonment and desolation, in disgrace and shame and destitution, in the bitterest pains and griefs. Oh, let us often look at ourselves in this wonderful mirror, for that will strengthen us cheerfully to endure every affliction without anguish within without and anguish within this tells us how to overcome temptations and patiently bear misfortunes no matter from where or from whom they may come this study of jesus crucified makes toil and pain easy to bear my daughter sophia um yesterday or two days ago shared with me um how uh, for those of you guys that go to group therapy dr mike often points at someone and says how much better of a Catholic they are than he is. And my daughter Sophia said, you know, Dad, uh, although Dr. Mike always says that, I want to be the Christ that he is. And, um, and what that means to me, and I shared this with Dr. Mike uh, yesterday, is that um, we have a lot of religious people in this world, but there are very few people that really live as Christ lives. You know, um, you can go to church all day long, you can sit in prayer all day long, you can uh, preach all day long, but until you walk with Christ and you walk in a Christ-like way, you're wasting your time in life, you know. Um, our Lord, our Heavenly Father, gave us a sample of His Son so that we would have a way to live. So just as this uh, meditation I just read to you, even you know, even if there have been many, many, many great books written about the life of Christ, right? I mean, you know, every day. I probably have too many of them myself. But if all those books were, were totally destroyed, if all we knew was about Christ and Christ crucified, we would have everything we need to know to live our lives in a holy way. As always, as I always tell you guys, it always begins with what? Humility. Humility, right? Littleness of heart. It doesn't matter how dumb you think you are, how incompetent, how great of a sinner, how many times you screwed up. It doesn't matter. In the eyes of God, once you have chosen to get down on your knees... To look up to heaven and ask God truly with, with the best of your heart. Ask Him to forgive you 
you started anew. And all he asks you, right? Because forgiveness, you know, in, in the confessional as a Catholic, when you, when you go to confession, one of the things you're supposed to promise is that you're going to change your ways, right? I mean, it does no good to be absolved of your sins if you're going to go right back to your sins, right? Christ calls you to change your life. The other thing that happens at that moment of grace is grace itself, meaning that God gives you a special grace so that you will not commit that sin anymore. Okay? But guess what? It takes your cooperation. It takes your cooperation. You know, I've, I've, I've known priests that have, when someone's come to confessional and asks for forgiveness, they'll say no. They'll say, no, you're not forgiven because you are not ready to change your life. Right? What, what good does it do to be forgiven if you're not ready to change your life? And that's a very wise priest. You know? Because it ain't simply enough. Next, <laughs> you know. So how does the priest know that he's not really ready? Well, that's uh, takes grace from God. You know, that's an experienced priest, okay. and obviously, it, you're it, listen. It's not. It is not the man that is forgiving you. It is Christ that is forgiving you. So you have to expect, and, and, and so as as a Catholic, when you go into that confessional, you have to expect that it's you're facing Christ, not. The man priest, because if you are, it becomes very, you know, and this is a lot of people that have trouble with confessions is because of that, because they see the man that they're talking to going, oh, you know, I don't want to tell this guy all my bad stuff. Well, that's not who really you're telling. And as a matter of fact, part of the priest is, uh, is that he is supposed to forget whatever you told him. Now, again, if you go to a regular confessor, what they will do, meaning a priest that you regularly Go to confession to on a regular basis. He will sometimes ask you, can I bring back a past sin to help you with your current sin? Mm -hmm. And that's the beautiful having, you know, a, a spiritual director, a, a regular confessor, because he knows your sins, right, of the past. Although he, you've been forgiven and although he's tried to forget, if he's going to help you on a daily basis with your faith life, that what, that's what he will ask for permission to bring into this confessional, you know. So, um, but it's very powerful, you know, so, so just re remember that, you know, our Lord calls us to live a Christ-like life, and that is absolutely impossible without Him, you know, and, and for each of us, it means a different thing, and every day it means a different thing, as a mother, as a father, as a man of God, as a woman of God, as a sister, as a brother, you know, all those things mean something different, you know, uh, and, and each, and that's why you need to spend time with Christ every day, you know, go to that little place of, of, of light in, inside your house, inside your heart and turn, turn yourself over to him and, uh, and allow him to speak to you and always begin it with humility. So, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all the, our children that we've delivered through this practice. We thank you for all the unborn lives, Father, that uh, you continue to bless. Uh, for husbands and wives, for brothers and sisters, for our friends, and for our enemies, Lord. Father, please uh, intercede in their lives. Please uh, help us to be uh, better samples of you, Father. Help us to be more Christ-like in everything that we do and in everything that we desire. Father, I ask you for a special uh, gift of grace this day, Lord, that somehow or other we would be more humble, Lord, to be able to listen to your word and to hunger for your word, Father. I thank you through your Son's most holy and precious name. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit.